Hello everyone, Kyle here from Wide Awake PH, and in today's episode, we'll be talking about our latest experimental lots coming from Tres Rosas Farm from Mount Apo. So this is really exciting for us to share because these latest experimental lots are using some pretty cool science-based techniques in order, to, in order to achieve better taste profiles and a better consistency. But before we dive in and do a kind of deeper discussion on these experimental lots, I think it's important to understand the history and the context behind why, why we commissioned these lots in the first place. So we've been working with Tres Rosas Farm for around two and a half years now, and this will be the third harvest year we're working together. And, you know, the working relationship is something that we've worked on for all these years. And to give you a brief summary or history behind our working relationship, it would go something like this. So on year one, we were new to the market and we wanted to find local partner farms that we could team up with and work together on an ongoing basis. So we sampled from many, many farms and we found that the coffee Tres Rosas was making was really, really delicious. So what we did on that first year was to sample as many coffee lots as we can and choose the best ones that we think would best represent our roasting style and the flavor preferences we have. And then on year two, we pretty much did the same thing with the exception that we commissioned more lots of coffee specifically for us. We did this because one, we liked the existing flavors we had and two, we wanted to see what direction we could take their coffees toward and kind of meet the demand of the market and also explore the flavor potential of that farm. So now it's our third year working with Tres Rosas Farm and we've learned a lot from the first two years collaborating with them. So this year, we wanted to try something more bold, more daring, and to work on our sourcing approach in a better and more intelligent way. So, you know, a big problem with our old approach was that we'd be buying smaller lots as they were made available by Tres Rosas, or we would buy lots specifically commissioned by us, but the risk was very high because our fermentation and processing protocols are not the most scientific or there's not a huge scientific rigor behind the rationale of those fermentation protocols. Basically, um, we just experiment and see what worked. So for this year, what we did was we hired a fermentation specialist, Lucia Solis, for consultation work. So I've been following Lucia Solis for the past few months. I checked out her podcast, see some blog posts about her, saw her on YouTube a couple of times. I really encourage you to check her out as well. She has some really fascinating work and talks about coffee in a very systematic and intelligent way. And so after the, the months of research, I was certain that she was someone who we could trust. So we decided to work with her. So I called up um, Tres Rosas Farm, the people behind Tres Rosas Farm, to ask if they were okay to um, follow her lead. And gladly, they accepted. So they're very open-minded that way, and that's why they're such good people to work with. That was done months ago. Fast forward a couple of months. Now we have a couple of lots here to taste test. Not necessarily to sell, but this is the result of our online consultation with Lucia Solis. So now let's take a deep dive. So we did two groups of experiments. This first group is what Lucia would call the yeast fermentation. So with this line of experiments, what we're doing is we're controlling the fermentation environment by inoculating certain yeast strains per lot of coffee. So we have here three very small lots of coffee and they are all using a specific yeast strain. So different yeast strains used per lot. And the idea behind this, uh, why we inoculate yeast strains, is that we can control the microbial environment in the fermentation process. And 
allow this fermentation to be more consistent and develop um, a consistent cup quality, consistent results, and also a longer shelf life. So very much a win for roasters like us. So the idea behind commissioning three different smaller lots of coffee is because we're using three different yeast strains and as Lucia mentioned, each yeast strain affects the flavor of the coffee differently. And the only way to figure out which yeast strain works for our coffee, our roast style, and our taste is to try them. So here we are. Uh, we have a yeast strain typically used for baking, and then we have two yeast strains used traditionally for winemaking. And uh, honestly, I'm so excited to roast this up and share our uh, flavor perceptions to you once we have them sample roasted. With this group of fermentation, what we're doing is called a lactic process, wherein we, instead of controlling the fermentation directly like we did when we inoculated yeast in the other group, here we're controlling the environment so as to influence the results. So the idea here, uh, when we do a lactic process, is that we are creating an environment such that we encourage certain microbes in carrying out the fermentation and discouraging the ones that we don't want, the microbes that we don't want from participating in the fermentation. The idea is by reducing the microbial load present in the fermentation, we'll create a more consistent cup quality as well as increase the perception of brightness and acidity in the coffees that we are making. Lucia recommends using this lactic process for coffees that are not so inherently fruity. And I think that's a perfect match, or this process is a perfect match for the coffees from Dressrosa's farm. Because typically speaking, the coffees we get from Dressrosa's have very high amounts of brown sugar with hints of acidity of red apple and sometimes grape. So we hope that by doing this process, we enhance the sensation or the perception of the apples, the grapes. Maybe, you know, maybe we can see some peach because the lactic process is known for adding some interesting tropical fruit and peach notes to the cup and decrease that sense of brown sugar sweetness we, we find in coffees from Trestrosa's farm. So it's important to convey to you that with these experimental lots of coffee, we're not trying to make a 90 plus point scoring cup of coffee. Instead, we're trying to create really solid daily driver coffee experiences that are sourced locally from our partner farms. Um, you know, I'm not a Q grader, but I hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get coffees that score anywhere from 82 to 84 points. If we get it to 86, that would be so, so amazing. This is a radical shift in our sourcing approach because now we're hiring a fermentation specialist and, and uh, hopefully work with her on an on ongoing basis to further refine the processing based on the results of our initial uh, line of experiments. But honestly, this is the objective for this line of experiments. We want to buy more. You want to buy more coffee from Tres Rosas Farm. So instead of buying tiny 5, 10 kg kilos worth of coffee from Tres Rosas and buying them sporadically, we want to plan our purchasing beforehand, before the main harvest arrives, and buy multiple 30 kilo sacks instead. This has always been the objective here at Wide Awake, to have a solid long-term partnership with our local farms, buy more coffee, make the coffee taste better. So hopefully, with this line of experiments, we can do just that. For me, this is the most important part of this video. We cannot do this without your support. So thank you to all our customers who have been supporting us for the past two and a half years. Um, I'm so excited that all of you are here to be part of this journey with us here at Wide Awake. And uh, we can't wait to share these coffees with you and to share the results of this, this experiment. And you know, all of us, I think, hope and pray that the results of this year's main harvest, which will happen on the fourth quarter of this year, will be positive. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.